Hola, my dear students. Today, we are going to continue Introduction to Organic Chemistry by Learning Lesson 60 entitled Physical Properties of Organic Compound. The physical properties that we are going to look at is the boiling points, melting points and solubility. So we need to be able to explain the differences between the physical properties of the organic compounds based on the types of interactions exist between the molecules, i.e. intermolecular forces. Before we start anything, maybe it's best for us to sit down in a group of four and discuss what are the meaning of physical properties? How does it differ from chemical properties? And then how many types are there that we always talked about? Secondly, what are the factors that affect the physical properties of organic compounds? And then you always talk about van der Waals, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding. What are they? Yes, we have learned them in Chapter 5, Semester 1, but you need to sort out your understanding and your memories into an organized manner. And then, how do we determine the boiling point of the same homologous series? Is it depending on the number of carbon, the functional group, and what about solubility? Does it change? Intermolecular forces are the interaction between molecules. What functional group a compound has would determine the type of intermolecular forces. In organic, we're going to look at three types of intermolecular forces, which is van der Waals forces, dipole-dipole interaction and hydrogen bonding. We can see that hydrogen bonding is the strongest compared to permanent dipole and lastly London dispersion forces. Inorganic, we always refer London dispersion forces as van der Waals forces. They are very weak caused by momentary changes in electron density. All compounds must have van der Waals forces and it's the only interaction present in nonpolar compounds. One of the factors that affect the strength of intermolecular forces is molecular size, whereby you can see if the molecules are big, it would have a larger surface area, making the intermolecular forces stronger. If you compare between a straight chain compound with a compound that have uh, branches, uh, we can see immediately that the straight chain compound would have a larger surface area, making the London dispersion is higher compared to molecules that have a lot of branch. For molecules that have branches, they would tend to have um, shorter length of molecule. This would have a smaller contact surface area. Ah, example 4.21 is the one that I'm talking about. The straight chain compound is butane. It has four carbons and uh, the boiling point is uh, recorded to be negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. So it's higher than a 2-methylpropane which has one branch down there. It makes the surface area um, smaller, making the boiling point lower, negative 11.7 degrees Celsius. So here we can see the dispersion forces for butane is higher because the molecule is longer and uh, the uh, other isomer, 2-methylpropane, is a bit shorter and fatter, making the London dispersion of van der Waals forces strength is uh, a bit weaker. 
Another factor that affects the physical properties of compound is um, molecular polarity. Here we have to compare between a polar molecule, fluoromethane, against ethane, which is nonpolar. So intermolecular forces here are different. Ethane has van der Waals forces, fluoromethane has dipole dipole forces. Because of the polarity of fluorine in this compound, the boiling point is higher, 194.7 Kelvin. Even though both compounds have identical numbers of electrons, therefore almost similar molecular mass, fluoromethane has a higher boiling point due to the large permanent dipole or dipole-dipole forces because of the high electronegativity of fluorine. The second type of intermolecular forces is permanent dipole. This is happening between two polar molecules. The attractive forces were stronger than van der Waals and usually for organic it is uh, characteristics of a haloalkane and a carbonyl compound. Hydrogen bonding. Look at that. Isn't this light very familiar to us? I think this is the fifth time already we look at this. H phone. A hydrogen bonding occurs between a hydrogen atom bonded to an electronegative atom, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. This bond or interaction are the strongest out of all the three types of intermolecular forces. Hydrogen is always labeled as a thick line vertically like this between the electropositive part of for example here is a hydroxy group with the electronegative part of um, of a water molecule here so in between the hydrogen of this alcohol and the oxygen from this molecule of water, we have hydrogen bonding. This is another hydrogen bonding between the uh, hydrogen of an amine. This is a primary amine. Okay. With uh, electronegative part of a molecule of water. And the hydrogen part of water is electropositive. And this is another hydrogen bonding, a different type, because this is between hydrogen and nitrogen, of another compound of primary amine. So as you can see, um, alcohol and amine can dissolve in water due to the presence of hydrogen bonding. Now, for carboxylic acid, it's a bit um, anomaly. Why? Because for two compounds of carboxylic acid, they have two interaction of hydrogen bonding. The first one is between this electronegative part of carboxyl group with the positive part of hydrogen of the uh, carboxylic uh, carboxyl group of another compound. So as you can see, this is electronegative and this is electropositive. So we have two times interaction within carboxylic acid. So it would have a highest boiling point and a higher solubility um, for carboxylic acid because it has a lot of uh, hydrogen bond compared to the other compounds. Finally, we have come to the physical properties of the organic compounds. 
because we need to talk about the intermolecular forces first. The first one is boiling point. The larger the molecule, the stronger the intermolecular forces, therefore it would have a higher boiling point. Melting point also has the same pattern. Let's do practice 4.15. Question number 2. Let's talk about solubility. The thing that we need to know about solubility is that compounds that can become soluble in water are the compounds that have hydrogen bonding. So if the hydrogen bonding are stronger, that organic compound would become more soluble in water. For example, carboxylic acid are more soluble in water compared to alcohol. However, as the relative molecular mass increases, when the R part of the compound becomes bigger, the nonpolar hydrocarbon portion becomes larger. So it will decrease their solubility in water. Therefore, smaller compounds is more soluble compared to larger. The compounds that have up until 20 carbons, they cannot become soluble in water because of the bigger um, nonpolar hydrocarbon portion. Practice 4.15. Predict which of the compounds in each of the following paths is more soluble in water. Explain in terms of intermolecular forces. Yes, we need to identify the type of intermolecular forces before we determine which one is more soluble. Let's do C. Both 2-propanol and cyclohexanol are soluble in water because they have hydrogen bonding. But 2-propanol is more soluble because it is a smaller size. When we have 6 carbon in cyclohexanol, the nonpolar hydrocarbon portion are larger, so it's difficult for the compound to become soluble in water because the strength of hydrogen bonding also is weaker. Okay, that's it for physical properties of organic compounds. Make sure you are able to compare between the boiling points, melting points and solubility of several organic compounds that we're going to learn further in chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Let's go! Bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.